Hey people, Intrad here, 1v1 Fedrid Folly, blue side. Mostafa is a lick to alpha, a melee specialist infiltrate and disrupt, some powerful offense and a bit of support up against dice roll as a plague champion starts off with a damage of a time bot gun can get melee weapons, some strong utility and support can also repair. Is this Night Lords or something? It is Night Lords elite scheme with all the metal album cover lightning strikes and stuff on their armor. Termigants on the field for Mostafa. Does anyone get double Termigants these days in 1v1s? I don't think so. Most likely into Ravenous. But will it be ra double Ravenous? We got double Heretics up for Dice Roll. Looks like they're going straight for a power push. It is noded. Oh, they might just hang out and cap the mid. Even after that, they could push it pretty well. Not much the Termigants and the Hormogants can do about it. Is it worth even getting the single termagant brood should you just get double hormogants here maybe they don't want to play into the anti-melee plague champion stuff too much you're just asking to get plague grenaded and stuff yep they're going straight for the power and they're gonna bash at least probably both of it actually the node and the gen here comes the Tyranid Cavalry to try and stop this, but I don't think it's going to work out for you, fellas. And the former gods need to be careful because they could get caught in retreat by CSM melee and the Heretic melee. Yeah, they took a bunch of damage before even joining the fight. Heretics get an aspiring champion. Got a bolt pistol and chainsaw. He knows how to use them. Gives the other models more hit points. And I believe Heretic Doom Blast damage these days scales off the hit points of the um, of the heretic so that helps out it is indeed a ravener brood for Mustafa but will it be two of them or will they get warriors as well I think double ravenous is fun double melee ravenous would be super fun with the lictor of pheromone but he seems to be off doing his own thing namely decapping stuff for the hive mind these guys decap the power Ravana Brood is indeed up. They start with with ranged Devourer weapons, but you can get a full melee loadout for them. There's that shooty shooty. It's good DPS as well on those Devourer weapons. Those heretics do not like it. Termigants alongside them. They could get Toxin Sacks, of course, to slow down the heretics on their approach with Crippling Volley. And it's Plague Sword time for the Plague Champion. Power melee DPS that ignores melee resistance, which is a big deal for your damage output. Also create zombies on kill. And he gets a nifty plasma pistol as well. Smack. Does not scale up when the Plague Champion levels in the same way as other weapons though. It's the way the damage is implemented, I believe. Because the damage ignores melee resistance, it doesn't actually count as a melee attack. It's, um, I think it's just like damage that's applied after they swing or something, the way it's done in the code. So it's not subject to level scaling like regular melee and ranged attacks are. Not sure if that's an issue because you still get the, you know, you get the melee resistance ignoring stuff going on. It's pretty powerful. But maybe if it got a little bit of a bump in DPS, in raw DPS as you leveled up, that'd be cool. Warrior Brood on the way for Mostafa. Start off as a melee unit with power melee damage. They can leap into combat to get some nice passive disruption from these guys. Oh, they're going Barb Strangler. So they'll be suppressing from ranged with that area of effect weapon. Two gens up now for Mostafa. Dice Roll has all three VPs. Got this plateau in the kind of northwest-ish area. That you can hold late game. The Plague Champion may be very good at that with turrets and perhaps a melee dreadnought up there stomping around. Are they just going to go tier 2 with double heretics in CSM though? No Eternal War yet. These guys with grenade launchers. That grenade barrage can suppress infantry. They're going to take so much damage so quickly though without an aspiring champion. 75 hit points per model for these fellas at level 1. I wonder how much the Barb Shango does per shot, does it tell me? 35, there we go. That's a massive chunk of the health gone already. 
almost half. Then the Raveners could pour in a DPS and probably kill a few models on that burst. Big Champion operates well under suppression. He's not very quick, but the suppression doesn't slow him down as much as other units. So he's decently quick when suppressed. I think he only gets a 30% reduction, whereas usually it's 60, 60 or 65% 60 or something. Was focused down there quite hard, but Heretics with a barrage that came in able to force their way through. CSM, of course, pouring in Bolter Fire. Dice Roll goes tier two. Central gen built up here by Dice Roll. With a single gen on it anyway. Lick to Alpha still doing that capping stuff. Doesn't have a lick of XP. Hasn't even flesh hooked a heretic or something. And they're on the power dice roll. Are they going straight into Blood Crusher? That would be fun. Nothing here that could really stop it. You can drop Venom Brood though as a Lick to Alpha. And if they're dropped in a good spot that could be the end of the blood crusher immediately i assume the blood crusher will just go straight for them though and tie them up in melee trying to approach this can be tough on slopes and stuff it's a nice barrage there's a burrow strike from the raveners they should tie up the heretics i think but they're trying to pour on as much dps as possible to the melee heretics i thought they go and tie up the grenade launcher guys Able to get Mustafa out of there. And there's some Nurgle worship. For the health regen. Get some melee smacks. Can they get one of the Raveners down? They could not. Up in the north, Plague Champion on capping duty. Lost their natural VP because of this Lictor Alpha sneaking around. There's the tier 2 for Mustafa. We do not see a Blood Crusher from Dice Roll. We see a Dreadnought. Awesome stuff. Always like to see me Dreadnoughts out. CSM may be close to dropping a model depending on how the health is distributed. I wonder if there's a way they could implement that. I always thought maybe like a colored dot over the model's heads or maybe below their feet that denoted how much health individual models have. Something you could toggle on and off. I don't know if that's po even possible through modding. But I always wanted Relic to put that stuff in. And it would just be like green if they're over 75% health or something. You don't need like a full bar. That would be too, a bit too busy. But a little dot that went from green to yellow to orange to red at 25% increments would be good. Here's the Dreadnought. Starts with an auto cannon, a big mean claw and an underslung twin-linked heavy bolter, or twin-linked bolter, I think, which has been buffed in Elite many, many years ago. So it's nicer than it was in retail. Packs a decent little punch. Here's a Venom Brood on the way for Mustafa. No surprise there. They will counter vehicles with their Venom Cannons. Just power bashing because Mustafa stole this gen farm. You guys going to cap here? Nope, they're going to tear apart some termigants who have their toxin sacks, but they wanted to finish that cap, I guess. These go straight onto the power again. Committing their dreadnought quite hard. And they have Mark of Zinch, Chaos Space Marines, with Aspiring Champion and Eternal War, pumping out huge amounts of anti-infantry damage, especially to heavy infantry, such as the Venom Brood, which is probably exactly why they got it tied up though might be really might be worth getting the melee reverence now so you could borrow strike and really threaten the csm in melee here come the hormigon brood they don't have their adrenal glands but they were able to mess up those csm the raveners even in their default state killed two models including the aspiring champion and they've almost got the dreadnought down venom brood Oh, they were backing off from the heretics there, I think. Warrior Brood have got the Adrenal Glands up. Gives them heavy melee damage to damage vehicles and the awesome melee synapse to buff the crap out of these Hormagaunts. They might get their Adrenal Glands themselves then. Also gives the Warriors themselves a bunch more health and melee skill. Dreadnought lives. Oh, hey, Chosen Plague Marines up for Dice Roll. That's very fun. 
unique to the Plague Champion. Damage over time, Nurgly Plague Knives. Passively damaged nearby enemies as well. They're very tough. Not high armor, but tons of hit points, tons of health regen. And they could create some zombies. We might see some Hormogaunt zombies running around. There's the Adrenal Glands. It's going to help protect the CSM, those um, chosen Plague Marine fellows. They're really good at counter initiation. Not so good at mobility. They don't even have a melee charge. But if something gets close to them, they're going to do some work. Here we go. There's Pheromone to debuff the... Um... Oh, there's no Pheromone. It was Toxic Cysts. Meanwhile, power was bashed. Warrior Brood gets away. Hormagons get away. But these guys are sticking around a bit too long, I think. Way too long. They got the Venom Brood down. A little bit sloppy there from Mustafa. Keep those guys around so long. We said they're not happy. Oh, were they microing over here a bit? Licked Alpha got torn apart by all that damage over time stacking up on them. They had Toxic Cysts. What else? What else? Oh, Lone Hunter and Scything Talon. So, yeah, they were doing really good damage. But, oh, there's a new effect for Lone Hunter. Look, that's awesome. But the Chosen Plague Marines explode. Another thing they do is explode on death, which damages enemies, knocks them over. And their explosion heals themselves. So, Lictor Alpha probably killed one. Then they all got healed. And he couldn't deal with that. More power bashing by dice roll. 395 to 144. Gotta get more Venom Brood, I guess, right? Gotta try and make it work. It's tough, though. Might need everything in the fight. Which negates the Lick to Alpha's Lone Hunter perks. Oh, they got another model off those Chosen Plague Marines. But yeah, I guess you'd crippling poison either the plague champion or the melee heretics what's more what's more dangerous i'd probably hmm, i'd probably do it on the plague champion and then try to focus fire them down because they can they can pop off a heal and get that plague sword if you make them waste their heal early when other things aren't damaged helps you in the fight it's, it's a tough call though because heretics in amongst your stuff Potentially with Touch of Nurgle too could be incredibly dangerous. Tyrant Guard on the way for Mustafa. That's what they're going for. Maybe alongside the heavy melee of the Warrior Brood will be enough. This Dreadnought has, I believe, minor melee resistance. So they get 20%, not 40%. Really nice to have though. It's a solid Dreadnought these days, this thing, I think. Out the gate. Still not convinced on the um, Mark of Zinch Dreadnought. It's just so expensive and so like narrow focused. It does it does well against vehicles, but I think a lot of the time you're better off getting some plague marines and havocs and that kind of thing. It's always a tough call when you've got an anti vehicle walker because that's it's a lot it's a lot to put into such a narrow focused unit. Raythord gets away with it because they keep their Big old melee attack and their melee resistance and stuff. Tyrant Guard is up. 2,500 hit points of super heavy infantry armor. Does not want to get shot at by the Mark of Zinch fellas, that's for sure. Going to take a bunch of damage. The Chosen Plague Marines might do quite well against it as well. We'll see how that goes, because all of that will stack up. And I think their damage over time is heavy melee, I think. And it all stacks up on single entities. So it does some good work. You guys full? Yeah. Four models. Level two. Played champions level two. Did the lick to level up? They did. Almost level three. There's those toxic cysts. Yeah, that'll really mess up heretics. Really mess them up. Ten piercing damage per second. For how long? I don't know. Probably ten seconds. Also gives you some really nice health regen. So pretty strong like solo in Lone Hunter build here. Went for the scythe. Maybe the corrosive claws would have been better, would have been better to debuff stuff as you're fighting it. 
They did have another Tyrant Guard on the way, but they cancelled it. This one took a whole bunch of damage, healing up at base now. And there's that Lictor Alpha too. 325-131 on the VPs. Dice roll is going to get a triple cap, I think. And the map looking quite red. Although, this is still bashed and Mustafa's going to steal it. Paul McGaunt's up here too. Dice roll does have this contested power going. Dreadnought's been a big pain in the ass so far. They almost got it when the Venom Brood first came out. But it escaped and it's proven very difficult to get close to since then. Current guard heals up. Ripper sp swarm spawned from this infestation tower here. They could maybe tie up the Dreadnought or tie up the CSM. Formagaunts want to finish the cap. Do they run or do they fight? They run. What's this? Lictor Alpha runs away from scary, scary chaos things. I guess they're going tier 3, Mustafa. They'll try and get a big chunky Khan effects up. They'll try and tear through this stuff. I don't think it's worth getting Gene Stealers with the melee plague champion and the chosen plague marines and the melee heretics. Because chosen plague marines with touch of Nurgle is nuts. Because you get their natural death explosion and the touch of Nurgle explosion. And touch of Nurgle damage scales off health of the model. So that would be a lot. Here comes a turret to lock down this area. You can flank around it of course but it's not going to be easy, easy to do up these narrow stairs. And there's some Nurgle worship. I feel like I'm still not used to seeing that aspiring champion with the bolt gun. I like the change though. I think there was talk of reverting that change. I'm not sure if that's still on the cards or if he's allowed to keep his bolt gun. Not well, a whole lot you can do, fellas. Mustafa's trying to just avoid direct confrontation. Confrontra confrontation, I can speak, because they know they can't really do much with it, even with the Tyrant Guard. Not sure what he's doing over here. I guess they're guarding that VP, but. Do you really want to isolate them like that? Power getting bashed again. There's that tier 3, Mustafa. No power income makes it tough. Big champion. Wow, messed up the Lictor. They have armor of pestilence, so they're pretty damn tough. And they have that self-heal, of course. What is it, 145? 215. It's a chunky heal. How is a Dreadnought not leveled up yet? They have the power to go tier 3, and there it is. Just got to keep, got to keep avoiding direct confrontation until then. Pick off things where you can. Try not to lose too much, so that you're bleeding. Don't think this is a good fight, lads. Power melee plague champion that can create zombies against the warrior brood. Messed up. Maybe they thought, hey, I've got adrenal glands and stuff. I could I could take him on. And he's a tough old bastard, that big champion. Here comes another turret. Cover the other VP, why not? Tyrant Guard still hanging out here. Does have a synapse, uh, not synapse, a capillary tower thing. So that guy moves really slowly when they're not under synapse, but you can mitigate that somewhat with the speed bonus from the towers. These guys just harassing. How much DPS does a Ripper Swarm do these days? Definitely single digits. Each model. Is it one? Is it like one DPS or something? Here come some heretics. That's going to feed them some XP. You get two red per, per Ripper. That's not bad, eh? You'd think it would be one. Level 3 Lictor on the Prowl. Oh, gets onto the turret. There we go. Should be able to get it down quite quickly. 
Warrior Brood can leap in on the CSM here. Well, some of them did, but they didn't knock them over. Oh, they knocked over one of the fellas. Here come Touch of Noble Heretics. Global ability of the Plague Champion. Gives them this Nurgle-like aura. If they die, they explode. Doing huge damage and knock back to enemies and healing allies. And of course, because it's Heretics, they can trigger that death explosion with their doom blast which also does damage and suppresses this really good synergy with those heretics can win you fights a lot that thing on the power again is dice roll another dreadnought on the way can muster for hold on to get some big stompy tyranids out they didn't want to stay in this fight because the of the melee coming in I thought they were going to wade in with the heretics and the plague champion there, but the raveners were there as well. They didn't want to risk losing things unnecessarily. Present plague marines, half a level. Level 2 heretics. We had a melee heretics, also level 2. Yeah, Lictor has done well. Just hasn't been in the big team fights. They've been used in this sneaky, sneaky lone hunter role. Can they get the other turret? I mean, the Dreadnoughts up there. And the Chosen Plague Marines. 40% more damage. There's a distraction. There's Nurgle's Rocks, by the way. From the Chosen Plague Marines. So if these warriors die at this point, they will spawn a zombie. 172 to 105. Oh, it is down. Well done, Mustafa. They've retained the VP lead and they've got a Carnifex on the way. Dreadnought wants to smack him, I think. Got a little smack in there. Here's the second Dreadnought and they've gone. Mark of Corn. Must have gone and fight that Tyrant Guard, it seems. This thing is mean as hell in melee. Current guard does not want any part of it. Remember, remember the Tyrant guard with super heavy infantry armor will be taking full damage from heavy melee, whereas the Chaos Dreadnought will only take half damage from heavy melee. And it will be doing more DPS than the Tyrant guard. There's some Nurgle worship and a Nurgle shrine. Everything's very cushy over here. They're holding this western plateau. Carnifex is up. And they're going Venom Cannon to shoot vehicles from range. There's a lot of DPS. Might be worth running the Chosen Plague Marines on, in on that guy to tie them up. But they're going for the Tyrant Guard. Warrior Brood in there too. That Shrine healing allies and suppressing enemies. Warrior Brood got torn up. Really torn up. Barely got out of there actually. There's now some warrior zombies hanging out. Current guard going for the Dreadnought. They might be able to chase it into base and finish it off. Carnifex has taken some damage. Needs to be careful. I mean, it has a pretty decent melee attack on it. It's a big old beastie. But uh, might need some support. Oh boy, here comes another Dreadnought. With Mark of Corn. The Carnifex won't like that. Current guard got the other one, though. Carn effect trying to leave. Looks like it was pretty well judged by Mustafa. Here come Plague Marines now from Dice Roll. Regular Plague Marines with their missile launcher. Mustafa gets himself into a good position now. Took out one of the Dreadnoughts. Carn effect survived. And they're on their way to getting another soonish. It might be worth getting a Neuro Throat though. There is a bunch of infantry around. It's hard to turn down a big old Carnifex stomping around, eh? What would you do, though? Would you get a Thorn back to try and fight this thing in melee? Would you go double Venom Cannons? Or Strangle Thorn for the infantry? I think I'd go Strangle Thorn. Because that still takes chunks out of vehicles and it's really bad for infantry. The Tyrant Guard is in shield wall mode, so he gets some health regen and vehicle armor. Surprised the Dreadnought didn't crack it, though, in melee. Oh, look, it's up. It's going for the CSM. Plague Marines are here. 
Are they going to shoot it? There we go. Victor Alpha gets the decap, 65-102. So Dice Roll has taken a VP lead by securing this plateau for a while. Most of not giving up, though. Victor Alpha flees, level four. Carnifex number two is on the way. I think they might lose the Tyrant Guard here. It's done a, it's done a pretty damn good job, though, eh? Oh, maybe not. Where's the Dreadnought? The Dreadnought's not gone after it. Dreadnought's trying to get after this Carnifex. I think he wants to do a bioplasm. Why are you going up there, bud? Carnifex number two's out. They start off as a melee unit. Carnifex is. There it is. And they're going thorn back. They're gonna go trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with stuff. And it's a good it's a good choice. Get that awesome disruption from the charge as well. And this dreadnought is low, this dreadnought's gonna go down, surely. So Venom Cannon Carn effects and the melee carn effects charging through. In on the Plague Marines here. There's Blood Rage on the Dreadnought. It's gonna go down to Venom Cannon Shot 65-102. Mustafa runs. But now what do they do about this guy? Oh, Plague Marines were left alone. Where's the bioplasmas? Have I just have I just been missing them on my screen? Rip has spawned to go after the Plague Marines, spawned by the Thornback Carnifex. And they really messed up those chosen Plague Marines. This Carnifex is getting quite low. And they're able to get another shot in there. Trixie, Trixie. They're trying to create some space with their movement so they can get the odd shot off. That Carnifex needs to get back to base. This Thornback, though, is running riot, and the Tyrant Guard survives. There's some Noxious Cloud action. 47-102, it's close. Mustafa gaining a bit of momentum here, though, I think. That Thornback is a... It's a big old thing, eh? What does Dice Troll do now? Double Plague Marines? Do you get a Laz Cannon in? I don't think you tier 3 here. Because the VPs are so low. 2-1 to one now for Mustafa. Dice Roll is sending heretics to grab this. But it might be a triple before that. Lictor Alpha's on capping duty. Level 5. Conifet's got almost level 3 with that rampage. Oh, here we go. Tarano formation. And those guys had Touch of Nogal on them. Seems like Dice Roll thinks they've lost the double Conifet's whammy. The second Dreadnought, a mistake, I guess you would say. Could have tiered, tier 3'd into Terminators and Tanks, or just stayed tier 2 and concentrate on fighting what they had up against them with more anti-vehicle and stuff. Well, there's a GG. It was a GG. Licked to Alpha level 5 at the end. Did some awesome work sneaking around. Blew up the turrets, fresh hooking stuff, capping a bunch of things murdering heretics and a plague champion with a plague fist at the end level four stuck together early on kind of moving their army around as one which meant they'd lost the map a bunch of times they did a lot of power bashing though must have forgot that burst of momentum at the end double con effects has won it for them the thornback was a beast but they have it guys thank you for watching hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you next time